All right. Okay, I guess we can get started now. Um, so welcome to the eighth session of Geometry and Tacos. Um, today we have our first talk, and so it's my great pleasure to introduce Jorge Lore, who will be talking to us on homogeneous complex geometric flows and their solitons. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for the, the invitation. Uh, I'm very glad to, to participate of this, this school. Um, okay, so I... This is supposed to be, is intended to be to, uh, an introductory talk hmm, on, on homogeneous flows. <clears throat> So we it will be it will be based on on this paper here. Uh, can you see this hand? Yes. Okay. This this paper uh, is is in a book, but you can find it in archive too. Is is it will be based on on, on this paper? Is is kind of a survey with some just a few original results. Um, okay, so let, let's start with the with a differentiable manifold M and a, a geometric structure gamma. Okay, we will we'll keep uh, the gamma, uh, I mean, without uh, fixing some type of a structure, we can do it uh, more or less all together for the same price, but you, you can you can think that we have an almost Hermitian structure, okay? Uh, but it can be a Riemannian metric. It can be just a, well. Uh, 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 it, it can be a G two structure, a spin seven structure. I don't know uh, many. We, we will see from a very general point of view all the all the all the concepts and, and results. So the, the the structure gamma is is said to be homogeneous if this group, which is the, the symmetry group of the structure, the, the automorphism group of the structure, if you want, acts transitively on M. Okay. So uh, two points are not distinguishable uh, from a geometric point of view. Okay? All the points looks the same okay? in particular. Uh, then each Lie group G uh, subgroup of this automorphous group, which is transitive, gives you a presentation of M as a homogeneous space. G over K, where K is the isotropy at some point, origin point O, okay? And in that way, G gamma becomes a G invariant geometric structure on, on G over K, okay? Uh, conversely, if you start with the G invariant gamma on, on a G over K, you, you get, a, of course, a homogeneous geometric structure gamma on M. If a, a Riemannian metric is involved in the structure, as in the almost Hermitian case, then you get that this group is a, is a Lie group, actually, because it's a closed subgroup of the isometry group of, of G gamma, of the metric involved, and it is very well known that that group is a big group, okay? And, and so you, you, you get this uh, in the same way as in the Riemannian case, that G is closed if and only if K is compact, for, for example. Also, in this case, you, you always have a, what is called a reductive decomposition, of the Lie algebra G of the, of the transitive group G. K is the Lie algebra of, of K, of the group K. And well, P is just a, an add K invariant uh, complement, okay? That's a reductive decomposition. And you, you, 
you always have that if, if, a, if a metric is involved. Sometimes if you are studying only, for instance, symplectic structures, you may not have this. Or sometimes in pseudo, pseudo Riemannian geometry, you, you may not have this. But we will assume we, we have anyway, so this, this, this is good to, you, you get a, of course, a, a, an identification with the tangent space, right? P, but you, you can always do it with G over K if you don't have a, a reductive decomposition, okay? Okay, so G invariant tensors, um, then can be studied and defined um, by, by studying tensors on, on P, okay? Because the, the identification between the, the tangent space and P is given by this, okay? By, by, because K, K is the kernel of this differential of P. Okay, of, of pi. Um, so uh, any any of these x in G can also be viewed as, as a as a vector field on M in this way. But the, the identification with this pi with this projection is a submersion from G to G over K is is enough to to see the the, the tensors on P, okay? You take now the, the space of R, RS type tensors like this on, on the finite dimensional vector space P. So this is a finite dimensional vector space. And you have the, the actions of GLP, the natural actions on this space of tensors. Yeah? And this, GLP representation theta will be used a lot in, in, the, in the chalk, okay? Uh, usually we will, in, for instance, in the almost Hermitian case, you have R2 and S0, okay? Because you have uh, two forms and, and, and well, metrics. Mm -hmm. And well, you also have the J, which is a one, one, that one, one. So this is the action. And, and well, the thing is that the, the, if you take a gamma, a G invariant a structure on M, the, the value at, at the point O, uh, well, it's a, this is an isomorphism, okay? And the isomorphism is with, the, the, the same kind of tensors on P, which are add K invariant, okay? In, in homogeneous geometry, this representation of K on P, which is actually the isotropy representation, is, is very important, okay? Okay, so these are the, 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 the G invariant tensors. And an alternative, uh, uh, a way to see this is to go to G, not to P, to, to, to the Lie algebra G and consider all the tensors which are, well, left invariant on, on the Lie group G and add K invariant. And if you put some element of K in any of the coordinates, you get zero, okay? So this is sometimes very convenient because for instance, if you have differential forms, uh, gamma is closed if and only if gamma hat is closed. And then you can study cohomology of, of G over K of M by working on, on the Lie algebra G, okay? And this and you get for free also this, this formula for the differential, okay, of, of gamma, okay, as, as, in, as in the Lie group case. Uh, okay, 
so we have this homogeneous space and well we, we consider these diffeomorphisms of m which are like the the algebra diffeomorphisms if 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 you want um, uh, which are the automorphisms of G taking K to K and so going down to the, to the quotient, okay? The thing is that this group, this special group of diffeomorphisms, which, which is very involved with the algebraic part of, of M, of, of G over K, acts on the set of G invariant tensors and, and so, we, we can use it to, to define uh, to define uh, G, the, the, the an equivalence which is uh, where, where G is involved. Okay. Uh, now that you you have the the, the normalizer of, of K in G inside this group, and if you use this group instead this normalizer, what you get is what, what it is called equivariant equivalence, equivariant diffeomorphism of the homogeneous space. But well, sometimes this group is, is uh, bigger, larger. Okay, so that this is the natural equivalence and for, for G invariant structures, and but uh, Sometimes it, it, the, the structure can, can still be equivalent from the general point of view with the diffeomorphism and not to be G equivalent. So it, it depends on the presentation, it depends on, on the G also. And well, if G is simply connected, then uh, you can go to, and K is simply, connect, simply connect, uh, connected, so you get M simply, simply connected, then you can go to the, to the Lie algebra and work <clears throat> with, with these auto, automorphisms, which are uh, identified with automorphisms of, of the Lie algebra. And then uh, you can work with, with derivations, okay? Uh, the derivations taking K to, to K always. And well, this group acts on, on, on this set of ad K invariant tensors in this way. And here we have a, a very interesting, because we, we have this group, a group uh, defining the, 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 the equivalent, the G equivalence is inside of this normalizer, okay? The normalizer in GLP of all the ad, ad K representation, ad K representation. And this normalizing, this normalizer still acts on, on our space. Of course, two structures now in the same orbit, they, they don't have to be G equivalent at all. But you can use these to, to get, for instance, curves of structures. If, if you are looking a way to construct algebraically curves of structures, which are pairwise non-equivalent, you can do it using this, this larger group. Sometimes it's, it's very useful. Okay. Uh, so let's, let's start with, with the flows and the solitons. So we, we have this homogeneous space and consider a space gamma, I mean, in principle, just a subset, a space of, of, of geometric structures as a, as a, as a subset of, of some kind of uh, tensors. Of course, uh, we should allow uh, uh, tuples, tuples of tensors, as in the almost Hermitian case, for instance. No? But okay. Then on this space gamma, you, you can think in gamma as, I don't know, the almost scalar structures. G invariant almost scalar structures or G invariant Hermitian matrix. 
you to 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 define the flow what, what do you need a, a, a direct a direction okay a, a direction q at each point gamma a direction where, where to go a preferred a, i don't know a distinguished direction in some sense and which will depend on 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 what what would you like to to do with the flow to prove okay so of course our example number zero is is the Ricci flow okay it's the Ricci flow is to flow a Riemannian metric in the direction of of the Ricci tensor okay which is the, the, the most famous one uh, but let's do it for any Q in principle. So you get a, a flow and, and well, in, in the homogeneous scale, uh, uh, case, we get an ODE rather than a, P, a PDE because everything is finite dimensional and eh? we are working in a, in a finite dimensional vector space. So any flow will be an ODE so uh, and the very mild assumptions on Q, uh, you will get a short time existence, forward and backward, and uniqueness. Of course, uniqueness among G invariant solutions. Okay. So, for instance, I don't know, the, 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 the Ricci flow is not defined in the general case for pseudo Riemannian geometry, for instance, but in a homogeneous space, you can study. You can study the Ricci flow on pseudo Riemannian metrics because everything is defined. Okay, uh, so in this context, then we can call a semi algebra soliton to a solution or, or to or, or, or a structure will be called a semi algebra soliton if the solution starting at gamma is self-similar, but self-similar, G self-similar, self okay? Self-similar with our special diffeomorphism, with the diffeomorphism which are involved with the homogeneous space, okay? So these are not soliton, are soliton in general, of course, in particular, but for a soliton, you the, the general definition of a soliton is with this f of t diffeomorphism of f. Okay, but if we stay in the g invariant context, then we call them semi algebra solitons. And so this is more or less the, the picture, right? This, this, uh, these curves are the, the, the automorphism orbits. Hmm? Actually, also uh, up to scaling, we, we, we need to, to scale here also. Uh, but then that, that's a soliton, right? It's, it's a soliton that when, when, if the flow is supposed to improve your structure, a soliton is, is a structure which says, I'm, I'm not improving, okay? I'm, I'm nice enough, uh, I'm not improving along the flow. So the flow stays in the in the in the in the equivalence class of the starting point. Okay. Well, so this is very general. Uh, let's just assume from now on this simply simply connected. And, and then we can prove that gamma, uh, gamma is a semi algebra soliton if and only if, well, we have here the, the usual uh, equation for the soliton, okay? It's just that this field X cannot be a, any complete field, it has to be a special field that we will see in a minute which field is. This is algebraic. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, then this other equation, which is more algebraic, okay? And is if Q of gamma is a multiple of gamma plus this derivation 
acting on gamma by the by the represent the usual representation which you have uh, on on p of, of on, on any tensor on p of glp okay the, the usual but then it's like that, that's 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 why it's called algebra soliton okay because the the the, the algebraic aspect of, 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 of G over K is very involved. And so this field is just the, the, the field defined by, by the derivation, okay? The, 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 you, you can define with this uh, one parameter group of, of automorphisms, they define a derivation, of course, the derivative. And then with that derivation, well, you are, you are defining the, the field. These, these fields are kind of the, if you want, it's like the um, generalizations of, of the linear fields on Rn. Yeah, that you, you take a matrix A and at point X in Rn, the field, the value of the field is Ax. These are called linear fields. This will be the, the generalization to a G over K instead of Rn. That, that's, so it's like the linear fields. Okay? They are not, uh, I mean, at, at the point, you, you can check that, of course, at the point O, at the origin point, is zero because all the automorphism are the identity at the identity. So this field is zero at the point. So it's, it's not left invariant, it's not uh, uh, killing. Actually it's killing only, only if the derivation is skew-symmetric, which is not the case, almost never, okay? Well, and then we have this, this result, which, uh, is essentially a, a, a result by ja, uh, Mike Jablonski. He, he proved this for the Ricci flow, and I just follow the, the lines, and you can prove in, a, in this very general context that, uh, that if you have a, a, a semi algebra soliton, then you can take these automorphisms uh, with this property that at k are the identity. So what, what you are getting is this, is this zero here, okay? Is this zero here. So the derivation is, is simpler. Um, recall that we, we have K here and P here, right? the, the reductive decomposition. And with, with Ramiro La Fuente, we, we proved that if you take the reductive decomposition, uh, which is defined with the with the killing form of G, you can do that if the homogeneous space is almost effective. Always the killing form of G defines a very special reductive decomposition. You get also zero here. So the derivation of, of a semi-algebra soliton must be very, very clean. Okay. So now assume that this this group is a Lie group. For instance, if a Riemannian metric is in, involved in gamma, mm -hmm. then <clears throat> uh, the the solutions. I mean, given given a homogeneous geometric structure, um, there exists a unique solution gamma of t, which is out invariant. Okay. Uh, so we don't know if, if there is a, a unique solution in the homogeneous case for a general flow. For some flows, we, we do, but for a general flow, we, we don't know. It, it's very unlikely, unlikely, of course, but we don't know, okay? Uh, but at least we know that there, is, there exists a unique solution which is out in value. So in particular is homogeneous. Gamma of T is homogeneous for all T. 
Moreover, uh, well, gamma of t is defined is an ODE, so it's, it's defined zero is in this uh, interval here. The symmetries are constant along the flow. You, you don't get more symmetries. And, uh, for any transitive G, now, gamma of t is the unique G invariant solution on the homogeneous space G over K. But as you see at the beginning of the lemma, we don't have a, a, a homogeneous space. We just have a homogeneous structure, okay? But in this last item here, okay, for any G, this is the solution, of course, because you have also uniqueness for G invariant solutions. And G is inside the group out. So, okay. And so now, if if you take a soliton, a, a general soliton, so this is the equation for X, any complete field, okay, which is homogeneous, and you are lucky and know that. The solution, this gamma of t, this, this gamma solution here, this unique solution gamma, is self similar because, okay, I mean, the, the fact that gamma is a soliton gives you a self similar solution, but maybe it's not this one, okay? So, if this gamma is self-similar only with diffeomorphisms, the then you get that G over K with, with gamma is a semi-algebra soliton for the presentation with G, the, the full group of automata. So, so this theorem is saying that uh, essentially all solitons in the, all homogeneous solitons are actually semi-algebraic solitons with respect to the full group of symmetries, okay? But yeah, I know that this is kind of subtle. You, you need that, okay? And, and you have that if, if you have the property that there exists a unique solution which is homogeneous for all G, okay? For instance, for the Ricci flow and many other flows, you have uniqueness for, for bounded curvature solutions. And homogeneous is, is bounded curvature. Of course, all this is, 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 is I mean, makes sense if M is non-compact. Usually if M is compact, you always get uniqueness. But the problem when, is when M is non-compact, that we can study in the homogeneous case perfectly, the non-compact case, but we don't, we don't get these, these general theorems about uniqueness. But okay, so uh, if, if assume that for the flow, you have uniqueness for homogeneous, then any soliton is, is semi-algebra, okay? By, by the, because the solution must be gamma of T. The soliton solution. And another general thing before uh, going to, to all, almost Hermitian is this uh, that you get that always the, the velocity of the flow blow up, blows up in, in a finite time singularity. Okay. You you can even prove this. Okay. That that the okay, this is this is something that. In, in the general case, sometimes you, you some flows, it is very good that the flow having this, this property. Okay. Well, in the in the homogeneous case, you, you always have this. Okay. This has to do with well, many, many, you know, I, I don't have time to to go on this. So let, let's let's assume that now that we are in the all almost Hermitian case. So the, the dimension to N, let's take a, but let's go to a Lie group, okay? Not a homogeneous space because 
it, it might be too, too technical. So let's go to a Lie group, G. <clears throat> Everything will be left invariant, okay? K is just the identity. Is G acting on itself? Take a left invariant, uh, almost Hermitian structure. And then any other almost Hermitian structure left invariant on G is in, in one orbit, it's only one orbit, GLG orbit. And the tangent space of the, this orbit, so the tangent space of the, the almost Hermitian, the, the space of almost Hermitian uh, structures is this one. So this PQ will be our, our preferred direction for the flow, right? This is the, the Q actually. But now we have two because maybe the two structures are evolving, the, the, the true form and the metric, okay? So P and Q, okay? omega will flow in the, in the direction of P and G in the direction of Q. Well, that PQ must satisfy this condition in order to get that the, the solution stays almost Hermitian. So stays satisfying that the J here uh, square is minus the identity. Yeah. Uh, so this is the, the, then the flow velocity must be in this vector space. And if you uh, translate to operators on P on G and, and write this two form in, in, in terms of omega, in terms of your almost Hermitian structure, it will give you a, an operator P and the same with the metric. This is a two tensor, symmetric two tensor Q. Then the condition for, for compatibility along the flow is this, that the one one part or, or, the, or the, the, this is the part of P commuting with, with J, okay. be equal. Okay. <laughs> so the, the thing here is that we, we can translate from tensors to operators because so each gamma, the flow, the, the velocity of the flow can be written in a unique way as an operator acting on gamma, okay? In this case, this operator, actually this can be done in general, okay? For any gamma, but in this case, the uniqueness comes from the fact that this is orthogonal to the, 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 the fixed point, the, 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 sorry, the operator fixing gamma, which in this case is U of M, okay? Okay, so, um, the solitons then, you can write the soliton in this way. For a flow defined by PQ with this P and Q with these operators, an almost a Hermitian structure, a, a homogeneous, will be a soliton. Actually, no, not necessarily homogeneous, but uh, this is the general definition, okay? This P must be a multiple of omega plus the Lie derivative with respect to some field and also with Q. And it will be a semi-algebra soliton if you already have a, a well, we, we should have here a G, oh, sorry, this K is the identity. If and only if there is a, 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 a number C and a derivation such that the operators P and Q, you can write, eh, this is a, like a very algebraic definition in terms of, of the operators. And you, you can define this which are called algebraic solitons, which are more special than semi-algebraic, and is when the derivation is orthogonal to U of M in this case. And, and then you get this very, very simple, only one equation, okay? 
I don't know if we, we studied with Cynthia Will uh, the symplectic curvature flow. And in that case, the, yeah, you, you, are, you are flowing, everything is flowing. So you have to really to consider this, but I don't know if there is another, for instance, in complex geometry or another flow where, where the two structures were the, actually the three a structure in, all, in, the, in the almost Hermitian structure is flowing. If somebody in the audience knows, please tell me. Um, okay, so the, the, the moving bracket approach <coughs> consists in, uh, uh, in doing the following. I mean, you, you have a, a structure and then all the geometry of the Lie group with the structure actually, in the simply connected case, for instance, is, is in the Lie bracket and the tensor, right? So the idea is instead of moving the, the structures, you can fix the structure and move the Lie brackets, okay? And so consider the variety of all the algebras is, is an algebra subset of this vector space. And then each point in this variety gives you a geometric structure because it gives you a Lie group with Lie algebra mu with this gamma fixed, okay? And then you have this, this equivalence, okay? So H from G mu to G H point mu is an isomorphism of Lie group preserving the structure. So it's an equivalence of of the, of the almost Hermitian structures in this case. But then here you are moving all the almost Hermitian structures on, on the Lie group G mu. And then what you need to do here on the left, when you fix gamma, is to walk around all the GLG orbit of mu. So that's the isomorphic class of the Lie algebra mu, okay? And so in that, in that class, hmm, you have all almost Hermitian structure on, on a given Lie group. And in the variety, you have the space of all, all, all left invariant almost Hermitian structure on all Lie groups of a given dimension, of course, okay? So this is a, is a point of view which, uh, has been used uh, for, for, for a long time mm -hmm. to, to, to prove many uh, results in, in, in geometry. Mm -hmm. The convergence, I, I don't have time, but the, the convergence of, of, of Lie brackets, eh? you, you can play with Lie brackets, eh? uh, gives you a pointed convergence of, of a structure. So, uh, Francesco Pediconi worked on, on, on this in the Riemannian case in, in his thesis with a lot of results. Uh, you have this con concept of degeneration, which is a very interesting concept in, in, in studying the variety of Lie algebra. You can have a Lie bracket in the, in the closure of an orbit, but not in the orbit because the orbits are not closed. And then it's like you can go with structures on one Lie group, a sequence, and in the limit get an structure in a different Lie group, and even topologically different. You can go from a compact Lie group to an important Lie group, for instance. So that gives a convergence, very, very interesting convergence. And of course, you have all these uh, moment maps and, and and stability in GIT, okay? Geometric invariant theory can be applied from this point of view. Okay, so what was the bracket flow? Let's go now to, let's fix J. Uh, so let's, let's fix a complex manifold, GJ. And so let's, evolve only the Hermitian metric, okay? So now gamma is only G. Assume that you have one of these flows. 
like pluricloth flow, Hermitian curve flow. So in this case, what is the space of all Hermitian left invariant matrix? Given one is, is the GLNC order. Okay, this, this GLNC is actually GL, the, the algebra G, J, with respect to this fixed J we have. Okay. And well, your, your flow Q must be a mass commute with J, okay? Uh, so the solution stays in, in Hermitian, uh, stay Hermitian, but then fix G, okay? Fix G, as we did in, in, in this moving bracket approach, fix G, and let's move the bracket instead of the Hermitian matrix, okay? So what you get, is a dynamical system on this variety of Lie algebras, which is defined like this. It's called the bracket flow. And well, it's a flow on, on the space of Lie brackets, okay? This Q here is that operator is, is in this case, is the unique Hermitian operator such that, record that Q, is in the tangent space to the space of Hermitian matrix at G. So there is a unique Hermitian operator Q such that Q is equal to Q acting on G. So that's the Q you put there, okay? And well, uh, it's easy to see in this case for, this can be done in general for any gamma, but well, in this case, it's easy to see that if you take this LG as the Lie bracket such that J is integrable, such that the G mu with J is a complex manifold, that's of course is a, an algebra subset, again, algebra variety, and it's invariant under the bracket flow. So what you get is the following. We consider the bo both solution. One is you, you, you have fixed the Lie group and started at the metric G at a Hermitian metric G and you have the flow G of T the flow of metrics on the other hand you can fix G and obtain this bracket flow the thing is that they are completely equivalent and in, in a very specific way you can take these diffeomorphisms uh, this is completely equivalent the, the two flows and these diffeomorphisms, given the equivalence at each time t, can be chosen to be the, 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 the solution to these ODEs. Okay. If you start with the, if you already have the solution g of t, you get h of t in this way, solving this ODE, and then you get the bracket flow solution. And on the other hand, conversely, if you have mu of t, you solve this ODE and get the solution. So they are completely equivalent, in particular, the, the, the maximal interval time of X is the same. Uh, the velocity must blow up because Actually, the proof of that property I, I gave minutes ago follows from this property, which is that the Lie bracket blows up. Okay. So that result is, is an application of the bracket flow. And as, as we said, this convergence, you have all this convergence. Uh, I have only four minutes. Uh, you have all this interesting uh, behaviors with, with the conver convergence of, of brackets, okay? Well, um, some applications, uh, this, this, I mean, this, this way to, this perspective has been used a lot. Actually, this, this moving bracket uh, approach, I don't know, was used in the 70s for, by uh, Heinze, by, by Milnor, okay? So it's, it's, it's not new, okay? Uh, 
uh, maybe what is new is the, the use of GIT, which was started by Jens Heber, the use of, of GIT of the variety of Lie algebra to get geometric uh, results. But let me give you some, some papers where, where it is all this, I mean, bracket flow, algebra and soliton, moving bracket perspective has been used. Uh, for instance, for the chain Ricci flow, we, we work with, with a four PhD student, we got uh, in, in results in dimension four and, and shrinking solitons. That was unexpected in some sense. Uh, also, there is this very nice paper by Arroyo and La Fuente, uh, which studied the pluriclose flow on Lie groups, uh, nilpotent, uh, almost abelian, and, and they get many, many results. And they, they explain how to, when, when you take a class of Lie groups, maybe the bracket flow is not, I mean, maybe your, your space of bracket is not invariant for the bracket flow. But then Arroyo and La Fuente explain there how you, you can modify this direction. You can sum, take a sum here of Q plus something in this case, U of N, U of N, uh, and modify the flow, which will, be, will, will still be equivalent to your original geometric flow, but now the class of, of Lie algebras you are working on will be invariant. And so you can, you can continue studying, okay? In, in, in that paper, the pluriclose flow also was studied from this point of view, using these tools by Enrique Fino, Enrique Fino Besoni and by Arroyo and Nicolini very recently, the moving bracket to, to study, uh, to prove that I think any, that any nilpotent Lie group admitting a pluriclosed metric has to be two step. And in the case of Hermitian curve to flow, well, you have La Fuente, Puglia, Vesoni, Puglia, and Stanfield, which is a PhD student of La Fuente, I think. And well, these are, you can go to these, to these papers to, to, to actually, I don't know, because each case has problems. It has issues, different issues that you can solve it in, in different ways, okay? But this is also in, in, in complex geometry, okay? Uh, the application, you, you, you have many other applications in, in G2 geometry, and, uh, in, in many other kinds of symplectic geometry. Okay, so stop here, thank you. Let's thank Jorge for a very nice talk.